Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to what I've taken to calling our mod pack little talks. <laughs> totally a Monsters and Men reference, but um, <laughs> anyways, uh, today I just wanted to go over some stuff that I've been working on and kind of give you guys an update. Of course, the pack is still very much in development. It's very, very time consuming, <laughs> to say the least. It's very, very time consuming. But I wanted to show you some features and stuff that I've been working on. Um, and we're back here kind of at our little hub workshop area. So anyways, I'm going to save the my personal favor for last, um, just because. Um, but I have been working on a lot of the, well, I've been locking a lot of Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. Because that's going to be, different recipes are going to be different tiers of knowledge. Um, of course, through game stages. And you can see there's some game stage books here. Because whenever you complete relevant quests from the NPCs, you'll get... Uh, different books like Basic Botanical Notes or Apprentice Blood Mage Notes or Apprentice Soul Ma uh, Mage Notes and so on. Um, there are also some things like your some a lot of your decorative stuff is actually locked. And the reason I did that is because after leaving the Between Lands, when you would normally be able to make a lot of those decorative things, the goal is, starting out, you kind of want to get your nomadic stuff down that we talked about last, last episode and then travel to the village. And so instead of, instead of having all the decorative stuff available because I know I do this a lot of times I would leave the between lands and then immediately the first thing I'd start doing is searching for a place to call home and the goal is to kind of keep it a little bit nomadic at first just until you reach the village basically and get your teleportation from your base to the village set up and everything and so that kind of that kind of pushes the player, I, I think, to at least reach the village. And a lot of the reason for that is because after leaving the Between Lands, you're likely to be decently far from, from the village coordinates. So you're going to have to travel to that village. And along the way, you're likely to see all kinds of like really cool biomes and terrain and stuff like that. And so I don't want the player to leave the Between Lands and just build where they land, you know, and start building and spend days building and then travel to the village and Oh, well, there's a really cool biome I would have loved to have build, built in, you know. So this way they kind of see the world. And, of course, by then they have their map and everything so they can mark it and go back to it. And kind of get a, a feel for the land. And then from there, after reaching the village, you know, they can they can work on getting those unlocked. They're all really, really quick. They're not like quest lines or anything. Um, they're just really cheap books that you can buy. And so then, you know, they can unlock whatever they want. And um, it kind of ties in with making making money valuable within the pack uh, especially early on though some of the later um npc hubs and stuff money will continue to be valuable hopefully all the way up through the pack you know and and it's not um we'll look at some of the quests because most of your money i mean you get a little bit of money from the quests um in the quest log but most of your money is earned from doing the side quests like just the the bounty board quests, which we'll get into that here in just a little bit but you do get a few coins from the early, early quest book stuff. There's also rare drops and situational drops and stuff that actually award different types of, of recipe books. For example, there's conversion wand and formation wand recipes. Normally, of course, these take astral sorcery to unlock. I've added recipes so that they are craftable, you know, earlier on. Um, but I've I've locked them behind recipes, and you actually have to get these recipe books. And there's also going to be certain Pam's Harvest Craft foods and a lot of the in-game recipes and miscellaneous recipes throughout the pack that you get as rare drops and situational drops and boss drops and stuff like that. So you may kill a boss and get the ability to, um, I don't know, make sentient armor from, from blood magic, for example, or, you know, something like that. And so the way, like... The conversion and formation wand recipes, for example. If I was to come in here and I was to spawn in some zombies. And let's grab ourselves a sword. And let's come right down in here. I've got these. These don't spawn anymore, but these spawned back in the day. Um, oops, let me set this to normal mode. If I start killing some zombies. And that's a champion mob. These actually, um, whenever I kill these, you'll notice they do drop... A common rune. Um, that's a tier one champion drop, and it's used for some crafting later on. There's going to be the runes are generally tied to dropping from various tiers of champions, and they are used in some recipes. Not early, early game recipes, but these common runes you do start seeing these. 
um, in some of the, the tier one knowledge crafts and then especially like in the tier two knowledge crafts. So you will be exploring to find those because um, those actually, they only drop from player kills. Those only drop from player kills and um, they do drop 100%, but only from the champions. And champions cannot spawn from spawners. So once you get to the point where you can make spawners, you still have, you're still, you know, you got to go out and explore and do things um, in order to, you know, keep progressing. You're not going to be able to just spawn champions out of a spawner and insta-kill them and stuff. Um, okay, so anyways, we killed some zombies. Nothing happened. Let's set the time now to, and I've got an error here. I've got to sort this. I've been, it's on my list. So I've been meaning to, but um, basically it's a game stage issue with Lycanites, and I've got to figure out, um, they don't register right with the tags on the website, so I've got to figure out what that is all about. But anyways, we've set the time to midnight, and we spawn in some zombies now. And we start killing these. There we go. There is a formation wand recipe. Um, those, the reason they only drop then, they only drop an hour before and an hour after midnight. Um, you know, that, that time frame, like a three-hour time frame in the day. So if you want to get the formation wand recipe, for example, that that's only going to drop from zombies. The conversion wand is only from skeletons. And it's certain time frames. Of course, zombies and skeletons, super common, you know, mobs to come across. So, more than likely, you're going to get them pretty quick. Because it's like a... I have it set to like a 10% drop rate. So, probably in your first couple nights, you'll probably get that. But, um, anyways, just something a little bit different and, and whatnot. And I'm actually going to lock those. I haven't locked them yet, but I'm going to lock it so that they only drop before unlocking the knowledge. So, after you have the conversion wand recipe knowledge... They're going to stop dropping. That way, hopefully, it's not all cluttery. <laughs> Just dropping lots of books randomly, you know. So, um, But anyways, that's that's kind of how those work. And like I said, I've got... I mean, this is only this is only the game stages I've, I've made books for yet. I've got some other stuff locked behind different game stages. Um, Pam's Harvest Craft especially is... It's taking forever because there's just so many food recipes. But uh, I've been locking a lot of those. Some of those, like I said, are going to come from just unlocking... Uh, your tier one agricultural knowledge stuff. But then a lot of them are going to be rare drops from different mobs. They're going to be side quests. For example, I've been working on a side quest called Juice It. And um, it's it's basically all making juice is what you're learning to do. Make, making juice, and then it leads into like making different beverages and stuff like that. Um, and it also kind of ties into the brewing stuff because there's going to be, even though you're not going to have necessarily tech, you know, there's forestry brewing and Benny's brewing and... Rustic brewing and all that different stuff. You're not going to be brewing those via the forestry machines, but you're still going to be brewing a lot of different brews and stuff that you're going to use uh, throughout the pack and everything. And it's kind of something that you'll you'll probably want to automate a lot of the brewing, but um, it's going to be done a little bit differently. So, and that's like the a lot of the grilled stuff you're going to be or some of the grilled stuff because you can only just basically place a raw material onto the grill and cook it. But instead of doing the Pam's Harvest Craft method where you take a bakeware pan and stick a, you know, uh, I don't know, a carrot on it and it suddenly becomes grilled, you actually have to grill that. And then later on you can make a modular machine that can do it for you. But so, but anyways, the game stage stuff, uh, a lot of the recipes, higher end recipes, a lot of the end game recipes are going to be um, tied to exploration and killing things. And there will be hints. So, you know, if you're having issues, especially with some of the later ones, because they will be very situational. Um, for example, there's going to be some rare spawns that only spawn if you're in a certain area doing certain things, you know, stuff like that. Um, so those will be, there'll kind of be hints about that, um, within the pack. So if you, if you can't find the recipes, there'll be ways to kind of figure it out. So also speaking about quests, um, this is kind of a tentatively finished, uh, it's not, the quests aren't all done, but, and the quests, there's, I'm still working on those a lot, but. For example, like your Between Lands quests are in through here. Returning home is a lot about just getting back to the overworld. Um, this quest tab, but there's a couple other quests that I have to add, but it's it doesn't have a whole lot in it. It's basically getting back to the overworld. This first section is all the nomadic stuff, um, and then you kind of have a lot of NPC-related stuff. Um, I did add some hook shots into the game, and I added my personal favorite, uh, which is the ones from Grappling Hook Mod, because these are a little bit more realistic. Like, for example, if you take your grappling hook and I wanted to climb this mountain, I've got to throw it up there. It hooks. Then I can hold shift and W and I can climb up this rope. 
and they they do get really really crazy like they end up you end up getting like motorized ones and it becomes kind of like attack on titan and it's all like physics based so for example if i hook that and then i wrap this around you can see the rope is actually hooking to those bits of stone um let me actually hook it right there maybe so see this <laughs> it actually like hooks onto the stone it's really really cool it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of cool uh like you know upgrades for it and stuff that um, you'll unlock over time, but I want to keep it kind of balanced so you're not going to have this right out the gate or anything like that. But Oh, but the quest. Back to these. My mark on the world is just crafting related stuff. Um, so there's some crafting quests here um, to kind of go through and show you all the different crafting mods. Because there's like 20 something mods that are just crafting. <laughs> uh, probably closer to 30 actually now. But um, And then of course there's, there's other stuff that's... that's tied into crafting and in different things but uh so that's kind of just to show you all the different crafting mods available cleaning up the clutter is all related to item storage and automation and things like that solitude's next top shelf is um this is something i've been working on this is going to be basically getting all the different types of seeds and saplings and flowers available and get it and this is the agricultural side of quest so this will be like your horsepower stuff uh, this tab here that I've started, but um, this is going to be related to cooking, and then this tab over here is going to be related to brewing, and then further agricultural stuff there. And there will be quests related to crafting, um, like small batches of every single food available, and then there will be quests related to, or not quests, but if you want to get maximum hearts, I'm going through and I'm actually counting the foods, if you want to get maximum hearts, you're going to have to pretty much make everything. If you like farming and cooking and all that stuff, there will be a world for you within this pack. I promise. That's something I've I've spent a lot of hours working on already and a lot more to come. Um, this one is all just basically wizardry, runecraft, and, uh, uh, well, wizardry, wizardry, runecraft, and electroblobs wizardry. So it's going to be kind of those three mods. There's also going to be some stuff like enchanting table and, you know, some little things like that mixed in here. But that's the primary focus of this tab. Botanical solutions is Batania, of course. And then uh, let the blood flow is blood magic. And then uh, manipulator of souls is very unfinished. Um, but this is soul magic. Uh, that's going to go here. Ancient world tech is tech tree um, for different tech mods. Crafting an armory currently has nothing in it, but uh, it is going to be silence gems, making alloys, things like that. It's a lot of your blacksmithing side of stuff. Um, bewitchment is, of course, the bewitchment mod. Lightning craft is lightning craft, astral sorcery. These I don't have names for, so I'm just, <laughs> these are just temporary things. Um, evil craft, Erebus, which of course, Erebus is going to get a quest tab kind of like between lands, so it's going to have its own thing. Um, and sets of things to do. And I've actually been looking at another mod. Let me look at the name of it here. There's a mod called The Midnight. And it's very much, it's kind of like Bewitchment. It's still very much in like beta, alpha stage. Um, but it seems kind of interesting. So I'm going to play around with that just a little bit. It may get added because I kind of want to, I kind of want to have like some unique dimensions. I mean, Between Lands, Erebus, and if I put the midnight in here, those those dimensions are going to be as is. But actually, aside from that, most of the dimensions are going to be different. Even the nether is not going to be make another portal enter, and it's going to be customized. So um, for just more original than just entering the nether and going and killing blazes and stuff like that. So uh, stuff will be altered a little bit. Then there is a mob hunting. Um, this one actually has a bunch of quests, but... Um, this is actually just all the different varieties of Lycanites mobs that I currently have placed in here. So that gives you an idea of how many mobs. It's like a hundred or something like that that Lycanites adds. Or right about at a hundred. It's a lot of mobs that it adds. So I've added quests for all of those. I will say that all of these mods, mobs do not spawn in the overworld. And not all the mobs that spawn in the overworld spawn as soon as you reach the overworld. Actually, when you first reach the overworld, once I get the... the how you're supposed to set up the Lycanites names because I've tried all kinds of things and what's on their website doesn't work um, with game stages at least. But So when you first reach the world, there's pretty much like no Lycanites mobs uh, and then they 
they'll unlock a little bit later. They are very, very buffed within the pack. So um, they're pretty dangerous, especially some of them. Some of them are very, very dangerous, especially the ones that are very, very uncommon to find. Um, especially if they get like a champion rank or something like that. But um, even even just initially spawning, they're very rare in comparison to, you know, normal normal overworldish mobs. So, and then even the overworld mobs are getting buffed because you're kind of leaving the between lands. You already have like full Valonite and that's not going to be like the end all be all armor or anything like that. So you're still going to want to keep progressing on armor. My goal is that uh, you're not ever going to reach that point where you're just like insta kill everything. You know, you may go back to between lands a little bit later and insta kill those mobs. Um, well, no, <laughs> that's not actually true because between lands revisited. Whenever you go back to the between lands later in the pack, it's, they're going to be buffed up again. So, yeah, but uh, that's that's a little bit later in the pack. But um, you do you do end up having, or the plan is, it's not yet implemented, but the plan is you're going to go back to the between lands later, and stuff's going to be stronger, and there's going to be some new new engagements and stuff. But you don't have to go back there and live or anything like that. But um, you are going to have to go back there. Then there's a collections. Uh, this will be like just collecting all the things type stuff. And there's going to be, there's actually going to be a faction related to mob hunting, collections, relics, and resource quests. So these four are going to have factions tied to them and a quest hub and everything as well, or a faction hub. Um, relics is relic, armor, weapons, equipment, items, things like that. Uh, for example, a lot of the, the blacksmith's quests, um, you're going to be able to go to her... Um, at different stages throughout the pack and say, you know, hey, what kind of armor and weapons can you make? And then you'll have like a quest to gather different resources, bring them back to her, and then she can make you, you know, kind of like handcrafted, powerful weapons and armor and stuff like that. And her stuff's going to be pretty good. And then there's also going to be quests for like old relics as well that you can do. Resource quests is kind of like, a, if you ever played WoW, um, <clears throat> back in the day... It's not as prominent now, but back in the day, whenever we were opening up like AQ and and doing the rep quests for um, for the main towns, you had to turn in like a bunch of bandages, a bunch of like food and different things, you know. And resource quests are kind of like that to a degree, where basically they need bulk amounts of things, um, you know. And it's kind of kind of one of those things, especially as that's going to be more of like a mid to late game type thing once you really start automating. And it's going to be kind of like automate these things and do this, you know, basically, basically <laughs> not spelled out the same way. But that's my plan. We'll see. These are these are kind of tentative and they may change. But um, and then there's a there's a tab here that's just primarily for the in game in game stuff. So um, but anyways, um, also the Bewitchment, Lightning Craft, Astral Sorcery, Astral Sorcery, Evil Craft. Um, they're not available as soon as you hit the world. They're, they're a little bit later into the pack. So, um, and require like quest to unlock. Um, some of them are tied to the NPC hub that you've already seen. Um, you know, just later on within the pack to start those. And then some of them like bewitchment is not even in the NPC area. Um, evil craft as well is not in the NPC area and you actually have to go out and it's lighter. Um, they actually, well, Bewitchment's just kind of out in the world and you have to go find it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, anyways, um, that's enough rambling on that. Okay. And I forgot that a lot of the stuff is, uh, a lot of these are actually locked behind, um, game stages. So for example, um, to show you, I'll show you like, if we unlock botanical, there we go. We got elven magic, basic knowledge. You ponder the contents of the book and you find yourself enlightened. I forgot to show that to you, so basically you'll get the book and then you just, uh, like for example, if I go into game mode S, it consumes the book and I get the knowledge. So that's how that works. But um, over here, I set up some bounty boards, so you can you can see these. If we open these up, uh, there's bounties. And I have to go through and I have to do some, some language stuff with the Lycanites because it says entity.epion.name kills. Um, I need it to just say kill epions you know but um anyways you can see like if we go out and we kill three epions which are big flying bats and you're actually gonna be killing a lot of those for some of the quests um well not a lot but uh you you kill a few for a blood magic quest early on or it's soul magic and then you're gonna kill some for the blood leech charge drops uh for a bit of blood magic as well but then if we get that and we get 38 lapis we get four coins 
Uh, and then some of these will get really, yeah, like this one here, you need 19 rune dust, 44 mortar, and 19 rune stones. And you get two times elder engraved coins, which are like the second tier coin, and you get four coins. Uh, some of these are going to have, like, there's a three times elder engraved coin. And to me, they seem pretty balanced. That one's actually quite a bit of killing, but you'll notice you have a lot of time to complete these. I went ahead and, and buffed up the time because, I mean... You've got to go right there. You've got to go to a jungle, pretty much, and find Konba. Uh, Bargas is going to be in mountains, and the Chupacabra is a pretty common mob. So You will be exploring a bit for these. So, But that's going to be where most of your uh, coins are come are that come from. You know, you can look at these, and there's actually... They're going to fill up with bounties, and at the town, you have three bounty boards. Eventually, you can make these for your town, um, but it's a little bit later into the pack, or it, for your base. Um, but each of these is going to be different, as you can see. Like, there's 72 iron ingots, and you get seven coins. Um, I've added, there's about a hundred different possible quest uh, things. Like, for example, kill Enderman, that's one. Get Nether Stars, that's one. But there's, like, about a hundred different things, ranging from killing things and collecting things and stuff. And then, um, basically, the, basically, the way Bountiful works is it adds them together. And then you get uh, basically a cost or whatever um, reward for um, that one's <laughs> 15 Aqua Middle Gems. You actually get a pretty good reward from those, but that's pretty expensive. Um, at least starting out, eventually you'll be able to get those really easy. But um, but anyway, some of these you'll say you probably are like going to be like, eh, no, I don't want to do those. But there's going to be a lot of options because it just keeps adding quests and adding quests, and then it it kind of replaces those quests with new quests and stuff and then if you want to do them you can grab it out and then you can get the stuff and then come back and just right click it and right click the bounty board to complete it so uh, but that's the way those work like i said that's gonna be where most of your coins come from they're built to not be you know i don't want something that's like get five gold and you get 10 coins or something um i want it to be kind of like uh like actually doing a bounty you know, people aren't going to stick on a board like, we need this, when it takes like five seconds to do. So it's going to be stuff that you actually, you know, may have to put in a little bit of effort to do, um, but then you're going to get your coins. And I think I've kind of got it set up so, um, I mean, there may be some more balancing, but right now, you're not going to be just going out and like having a shopping spree every time you complete a bounty board quest. I mean, some of them, yes, some of them are tough and they take a, a lot of things to finish, but... It's all, it all just depends on the RNG of Bountiful uh, as to how, <laughs> how easy they are. But that's why I put a few bounty boards, and then, like I said, you can make some later on for your base. And you could make a wall of bounty boards, and all of them would have different quests and stuff. So, um, But anyways, that's that. And I think the last thing I wanted to show you, this is going to be a little bit shorter. It's not going to be a three-episode thing. It's going to be like a one-episode video uh, for today. This is something that I have spent a ton of time working on. And I still, of course, I still have a ton of time left. But I think I'm, I'm at the point where I'm pretty comfortable with it. Like, I've learned it, and I'm happy with, with where I'm at working on it. So adding entries and stuff, it's really, really quick. But whenever you spawn in uh, to the pack for the first time, you're going to have your quest book, um, which, of course, you can hotkey, so you don't even have to carry that around on you. But in your inventory, I have replaced your recipe book from Vanilla Minecraft. I have replaced it with this. This is the Tales of Elora, which is actually the working title, maybe the name of the pack. So kind of like a Tales series reference, you know, like Tales of Vesperia and everything. But um, of course, I'm a big fan of those games. But that's kind of the working title, maybe the name of it. We'll see. But um, anyways, if you click right here, your recipe book has been replaced with your Tales of Elora book. And if we open this up, you can see it says, this is all done through patchouli. Because um, it was already in the mod pack because like there's mods that I have that need it. And then I started playing around with it. Because we were looking at ways to do lore. And like Tyler, for example, found... Like this was the old lore book. So it would be like Tyler helped me with this. And it says, On the Ring of Summoning by High Sage Onebius. Um, tattered, it says a tattered book that has seen a lot of use. Uneth has scribbled some notes at the back of it. And then if you open this up, you have 14 pages, um, just kind of lore, that ties into the story and stuff. Well, now the lore is done through this. And um, it says, this book should be the perfect place to store all the information and lore I come across in my travels. And a lot of this stuff, I don't have it locked at the moment. Um, a lot of that's because I wanted to show you guys this, so I didn't want to lock it. But 
Um, it's going to be, I'm going to have achievements set up. Um, I haven't set them up yet, but there's going to be achievements here and all these are going to get deleted, but it's all going to be custom achievements within the pack. And when you reach certain milestones, like, um, for example, this one, oops, this one here for the relics and artifacts, there's one entry in here and that's the ring of summoning. And it says there are many artifacts within the world of Elora and its connected realms. I'll keep any information I find on them here. Well, when you finish the first quest for Unath, he gives you um, this lore book on the Ring of Summoning. And whenever you get that lore book, it's going to unlock this entry here, which actually has the exact same task, uh, text. It does show you the Ring of Summoning here, and it has, you know, all the all the stuff that was in the that was in the other book, but it's all here. Okay, and so that way you have one place where you can go. You don't have to keep up with all your books. You just have it and it's saved in this book. If you die, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be there. This is forever unlocked for you within the book. And whenever you don't have it, it's just going to say locked. Like you're going to know something's there, but you can't you can't access it until you get the the relevant advancement. Then there's a bestiarum vocabulum, and this is your bestiary section. And ignore all these swamp hags. These are here because I basically copied the format, and there are, the first thing I did was Swamp Hag, so everything is listed as Swamp Hag over there. But it says, the realms are dark and full of terrors, totally a reference. I should keep notes on the creatures that I encounter. And then you have uh, Bestiaries, which the Betweenlands Bestiary is actually finished out, except for I forgot to add Greeblings to this. So I'm going to add those to that. Um, but for example, these are the creatures that you will come across in your time in the Betweenlands, and, for example, if you open this up, you can see there's a white, and it talks about them, and some of the, like, it talks about some of the mechanics of the, the enemy and stuff. I mean, some of these, they don't have a whole lot of text. Like, for example, Blind Cavefish. I don't know really what all I can say about Blind Cavefish. It's just a little fish that's down in the water and doesn't do anything. So, you know, some of these have, you know, variable amounts of text. Um, the Firefly, actually, right now it has this here. It's not going to have a... It's not going to have one of these because the Firefly doesn't show up uh, right in here. So what I'm going to do for mobs like that, I have to go. I have a list actually on my to-do list. But I'm going to go around and get screenshots um, in the Between Lands. So Firefly is going to be one of the things I screenshot. And so there'll be a screenshot there of a Firefly. And I've went through and scaled all of these and, and kind of adjust them because the Anglerfish was like down here. And I scaled it and, and brought it up and everything. So... Um, and then the lurker doesn't rotate because his tail, I have to make him really small so his tail doesn't cover things, but he's the only one that doesn't rotate. Um, Peak Mummy's got to get a screenshot as well, but um, anyways, there's there's stuff in here. Um, the bosses and mini boss bestiary, um, this one's actually unused at the moment. This will be for whenever you return to Between Lands, um, but then you have like the dreadful Peak Mummy and you have some information on him and the mechanics of it, the Primordial Malevolence. You have some information on him, as well as kind of some hints to upcoming lore and things like that. There's a little bit of hints within that. The spirit tree. Um, these you will unlock by just beating the boss for the first time. The mob entries after you kill so many of them. So maybe you kill five anglerfish, then you're going to get um, this entry. So honestly, like when you're, when you're first starting out, you want to kill everything. Even if it's not aggressive, kill everything because then you'll get... Some entries here, and there is a little bit of uh, stuff that I think is a lot of times overlooked, like the root sprite. Um, it says they tend to have numerous plant items, including even rare seeds that could prove useful. Of course, that hints at the fact that they can drop a spectra some white pear seeds from these little guys. Um, and there also might be some more information later on, maybe a full drop chart um, that can come from them or something. But I don't know. I don't know for sure because. Uh, certain things, of course, are certain like rare drops and situational drops and different things. So I don't know if I want to include those here or I have something else in my head um, for that. But there's actually going to be, there's two other bosses that are going to be here um, for the return to Between Lands part, which will be later. That's the Dark Druid and then there's going to be two others. But, but we'll see that later, hopefully. Um, the Dimensions tab, um, it says there's no results. There is, but it's all right here. There's going to be some stuff here, but... Um, for right now, there's nothing. But it says, with all the different realms to explore, I should keep notes of all the places that I visit in the areas within. So if you click here on the Between Lands, 
Uh, the Between Lands is a dimension shrouded in as much mystery as terror. I should keep what bits of information I find on it here for reference. Okay, Between Lands lore. There's going to be other stuff added to this, but right now all those entries, those little notes that you find while you're exploring the Between Lands, you have them here. All the text for all of these is right here. And these are all, these are all done. And of course, this is basically just copied from the text entry. I am going to add a picture to each of these because, for example, like the entries, the dungeon shrine, I want to add a picture of a dungeon shrine because normally when you open up those lore notes, so for example, if I open up that, ancient history lies everywhere and it shows kind of a little hand-drawn image. So I want to add some kind of an image um, so you can kind of get an idea because there's actually, there's actually some pretty good information in these. So they'll probably get a picture in here. Um, but that's like there's going to be a between lands um, structures area. So I may just put the pictures there or maybe pictures in both of them. I don't know. But different structures that spawn in that dimension and you can unlock them as you find them sort of a thing. Um, between lands biomes. This is the these aren't added yet. But I have these are I have four copies of Swamplands. That's because I have to do the cavern layer and the um, deep cavern and uh, one other that I forgot. Uh, marsh, maybe? Yeah, I have to add the marsh. So I was working on that and then I didn't have time to finish it. But I wanted to get this video out for Saturday. So, But it says, among the swamps and bogs of the Twin Lands lies various ecosystems, each unique in its own ways. And you'll actually unlock these when you first enter that biome is what I'm thinking. So after you first enter it, you'll get some, some entry here. So for example, your swamp lands says the swamp lands of the Twin Lands are a great place to set up a home consisting of plenty of land uh, compared to other places. They also support a vibrant variety of fauna and flora. Plenty of mushrooms and other food sources such as nettle exist here. One could generally find a variety of tree species, including the giant weedwood trees and stumps, which are very valuable for not just wood, but also dentrithists and seeded hangers. Tar pools also have a chance to spawn here, so one should always have a level of caution when moving about these areas for the first time. Nothing worse than falling right into the middle of a tar pool filled with tar base, believe me. Um, so anyways, you're going to have a little bit of information here, so if you want to kind of read about some of the things that you can find within those biomes, um, you know, some of the general idea of that biome, then you're going to have it here. And I'm going to include some images too, so if you're, you know, if you're having issues identifying them or whatever, you will have that available um, there. And like I said, there'll be some other stuff. There's going to be like between land structures or, you know, whatever I end up naming it right there and um, then you'll you also have unlocked progress so if you haven't found these it's going to say locked and you'll get progress um, to fill in as you explore those and then you'll have like a total unlocked within the within the the thing here too so um, but next up we have the mod section this is actually going to be 100 percent unlocked from the get-go um, but what this is it just says just some notes on all the contained content within the pack and its various purposes. And I haven't added all of these. I've added one as an example for you guys. But it says the Between Lands. The Between Lands is a mod which adds one of the very best dimensions ever imagined. A dreadful swamp that stretches on for miles with terror lurking in every corner. The Between Lands is sure to offer a challenge to even the most experienced. With numerous mechanics, mobs, bosses, items, and things to see and do, it's a hands down um, it is hands down a must pick for most packs. Check it out on CurseForge, and there's a link there. So if you want to go to CurseForge, you want to look at the mod, it's there. I figured I'd include this, so, you know, it's going to have a little description. So if you're wondering what something is, even the library mods, still going to have a little description of what they are for and a CurseForge link. So it's, it's, it's kind of, I, I thought it was kind of nice because it, it gives you a little bit of information. If there's a mod you've never messed with and you don't know what it does, you can easily just open up this book. It tells you just a synopsis about the mod gives you the CurseForge link, which of course could be useful for you, but also um, it's good for, I think, the mod pack makers, because I know they spend a lot of time working on these things, and this kind of gives them another another way to kind of recognize them, I think, uh, with the mods. So all the mods within the pack should be there. Um, well, it will be there by the time <clears throat> the pack gets a public release. So, uh, And then there's helpful resources. This is for stuff like, it says, when the going gets tough and things are hard to figure out, a little help is always appreciated. This will be external links to things that, if you're having issues with, like Between Lands Brewing. It says, having trouble learning how to properly brew potions through Between Lands Brew System. Um, hopefully this will answer any questions you have. And it's a video link, and it takes you to the brewing video that I made about Between Lands Brewing. 
Okay. Then there's the Between Lands Wiki. So this takes you to the official Between Lands Wiki. So if you're having issues with anything there, and I'm going to add some more links, you know, as time goes on and stuff. So if you're having any issues with things, this will be the place to kind of help out um, in finding that stuff. And then you have the Entry Index, which is going to have a million Swamp Hags and <laughs> everything that's, that's within the book at the moment. So what's really nice is if you go to like the Ring of Summoning, we can hit Add Bookmark. We can go to the Bestiarian Vocabulum, Primordial Malevolence, and the nice thing is then you can you can just access these. So you can just, pew, there we go. And then you can shift click to remove them whenever you're done with them. And then I can also, I think it's shift click, yeah, so there we go. You can shift click to add them as well. So that way you can have some open and easily accessible um, to you. And like I said, the book is always going to be there. You don't have to carry it on you. I have this because it's, I'm in, I'm in creative mode most of the time, so I can, I can access it, but, uh, you will just have the book here all the time. But that way there's, there's a place it's going to have a lot of useful information. I mean, I know not everybody's going to appreciate it. Not everybody's into like reading a lot. Um, but there is going to be a whole lot of lore and a lot of like helpful, uh, helpful, information tips and little things like that and they are there is some stuff that's like read between the lines and there's some hints about mobs that are kind of read between the lines and some of it's pretty straightforward as you go through the pack you know that's going to be there and it's going to update dynamically as you do different things and and whatnot so and then anytime anytime that you have found a new entry it will flash with an exclamation mark as well so um but anyways i think that's about all i wanted to cover today um, it's mainly like some new little features and things that are being added um, to the pack and being worked on and everything and of course the pack's still a long ways from being done no release date uh, there's no there's no release date at the moment <laughs> it's just it's still very much in progress and development and stuff so i'm hoping i'm hoping i've been working i've been spending a bit of time working on a new the first um well the, the early dungeon for the pack like it'll be one of the first big custom dungeons that you do i've been spending some time working on that so i'm hoping that the next little talks video will be on that dungeon and we'll kind of go through it and i'll show it to you and stuff like that we'll see <laughs> but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys are um, interested in it and you know the lore book it, i think it's gonna be really really cool though whenever it's done and you kind of have just a book of all your travels and and everything and they are so, and plus all the lore, because we're planning on doing just a, a, quite a lot of custom lore. Um, some of it will come back up as the story goes on and as the pack goes on. Um, other things are just, just that. They're just lore, you know. So, <clears throat> but some of the stuff will tie back into to current events, so to speak. So, um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, you can ask them in the comments or you can ask on the Discord um, I'll answer what I can. Some of it, I'm not, some of it I'm not going to answer. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, so, but, um, anyways, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.